I got to be honest with you. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, topics, emergent properties. A little bit not so easy to explain and understand, but uh, you know, I'm also a TUK teacher and uh, I like this topic. So what are emergent properties? Because multicellular organisms, so organisms made of many, many cells, such as human beings, plants, whatever, they show so-called emergent properties. And what is an emergent property? Um, these are properties characteristics which cannot be identified by analyzing the individual cells alone. Now, how can I explain this? And over here, um, I have um, on the right side a termite colony. So this is uh, made by many, many thousands of little termites. And they have a very complex uh, design. So um, because there are so many thousands, if not millions of termites living in one of these colonies, they have a really important uh, uh, problem to solve. Namely, um, oxygen cons consumption is very high. Um, so actually they would die because all the oxygen in the termite colony would be used up um, and uh, there would be too much heat generated because of the cell respiration. So they would also die of overheating. So and in order to avoid all of that, these termite uh, colonies are constructed with a built in, how shall I say, air conditioning or ventilation system. So there are channels in there um, which allow for natural air circulation so that the termites in there do not die because of lack of oxygen. Now, that is now the question where when I analyze an individual termite, where can I find the building plan for this termite colony? And as a matter of fact, you cannot find it anywhere because the building plan arises out of the interaction of the components of the, of the cells in a, in a multicellular organism or in the example of a termite colony in the termites. So by working together, you're able to have something or create something which cannot be found in the individual cells alone or in the individual termites alone. And uh, in other words, there's a nice quote is uh, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. A multicellular organism is more than a collection of cells. The cells cooperate and new characteristics appear and these characteristics cannot be found in the individual cells alone. There was once a nice um, example. Um, the, um, there was a, a team of scientists um, once and they, got, they somehow got the brain of a very um, intelligent person or at least a person that they thought was very intelligent. And they tried to now uh, slice up the brain um, of this uh, person um, to observe it under the microscope to discover why the person was so intelligent. Um, the problem that we have here, in my view, is, is, is um, that is, can intelligence or really be found in your nerve cells? Of course it can be found because if you have many nerve cells and many nerve cell interconnections, yeah, okay, maybe you, um, you can say, yeah, the person was more intelligent because uh, there are more nerve cells there. That's a possibility of seeing it. But is this really the definition of intelligence that we have? That intelligence is that when you have a lot of nerve cells? So, or is intelligence not really something much more, the ability to apply your knowledge, the ability to critically reflect on your knowledge and so on. But where can you find all of that inside your brain? I mean, it is stored in the brain, but by analyzing individual nerve cells under a microscope, I'm not able to discover your thoughts and your ideas or your hopes for the future. Of course, they are stored in the brain, but by analyzing them individually under the microscope, I'm not gonna be able to find your personality. So, and that is basically um, um, one of these um, ideas here and the interesting things, even though the, the, the cells somehow, um, yeah, the cells store the information, but maybe not explicitly. Um, and they can essentially um, create new concepts or their new con concepts appear, which were not there before when you only look at individual cells. So, and that's my example, thousands of termites build a termite colony, but the building plan of such a construction cannot be found by analyzing individual termites. The termite mound the colony emerges due to the cooperation of different termites. And essentially this termite colony serves as an example of for multicellular uh, organisms in general. Um, we are much more than simply a collection of cells. And um, essentially by reducing 
multicellular organisms only to a whole bunch of cells, it would be a very incomplete description. That would be almost like saying, music is nothing more than vibrations in the air. Yeah, of course, <laughs> you need vibrations and sound vibrations in the air to have music, but is this explanation really sufficient to describe a musical piece? Hardly. And that's essentially also the, the issue that biologists have is, is uh, when they study multicellular organisms, um, on a biochemical level, um, what's going on inside cells, many things are understood. Um, but essentially how many of these cells cooperate to make a new or to make an organism which works together and which is able to do things which the organism was not able to do before. Now that is much more difficult to understand. And these characteristics, these characteristics are referred to as emergent properties.